Hi, I'm Lord Tony, and today we're going to be hacking the crap out of Halls of Torment. Halls of Torment is another one of those vampire survivors type knockoffs, much like Hollow Cure from my last video. And also like my last video, we're not going to be using Cheat Engine to manipulate the data in real time. We're going to be trying to hunt down and manipulate the save data. Now I've already done this before, so you know, be under no delusions that I'm figuring this out as I go along. But uh, I'll tell you the stuff I learned along the way, and maybe it'll help with the process of doing this kind of hacking for yourself. So in my last video, I posited that most of these games are probably the same sort of thing, where you just have to find the file in, you have to just find the values in the save file and then manipulate them to get what you want. But let's do a little bit of research up front. So what I want to do is find out what kind of game engine this used, and luckily they tell me right here in the credits that this game was created by Gal Gadot. So I need to keep that in mind while uh, trying to pursue this save file. Maybe we can learn some things. Another thing we want to do is maybe pick a target value to look at. So I'm saying this gold here, 5,500, uh, that's what I'm going to shoot for changing when I try to manipulate the save file. So with that, we are off to the races. So uh, here I am just on my normal Steam page here, and from here you can actually hit this Manage button, and then Manage you can browse your local files and find out where this EXE or MSI or whatever it is actually lives. So here it is on my computer, and there is no save file next to this. I looked through all these files, none of them are the save file, but there is a little breadcrumb here. This Steam app ID tells us what Halls of Torment actually is. So it's uh, 2218 and then 750. So keep that in the back of your head. So after fumbling around a little bit longer and searching my whole computer and other Steam folders and then even the internet for trying to find out where save files normally live, I found out that it is in Program Files x86 and then there's a Steam folder in here and a user data folder from there. Now in this particular spot, the user data, I've got like two of these numbery looking profiles. I think a new one of these is created whenever a new user logs in on your computer, like logs in to Steam. So I believe this one right here might be a friend of mine or my wife's, but no, it hasn't been modified since like 2018. So probably not what we're looking for. This one right here, more recent. So I'm going to take a look in here, and then we got a folder full of folders also with numbers. But one of these numbers jumps out at me, and it's this guy right here, 2218750. -2 that matches the Steam ID of Halls of Torment. And sure enough, digging in a little further, we see HOT, which probably means Halls of Torment, underscore profile. So I'm thinking this right here is our save file. So I'm going to crack this open with like Notepad or a hex editor or something. And what I notice uh, when looking at this is this is not x86. Uh, this is some other encoded data. Like maybe this is their serialized data. There's a whole bunch of unreadable gunk in here. But there's also some kind of pattern. Like I would expect, you know, random readable words to be in here if this was just some sort of serialized encoding. But instead I get like gkit hapa and mpai tequivagalewa. And then these seem to be repeated, and then these seem to be repeated. So I'm thinking this might be some sort of XOR data, like XOR with a repeatable key. So I'm going to try and take all of this data into CyberChef and do some sort of brute force XOR attack uh, character by character and see if anything jumps out at me. Uh, did I not have this open already? Let me go. Let's go to CyberChef. And I'm going to just drop this file right into CyberChef. Come on, please click and drag for me. All right, so CyberChef has now loaded this file, and I said I wanted to do an XOR brute force attack. So I'm just going to do an XOR brute force, and what this does is for every, for every byte between 1 and 255, it just XORs every byte in the input with that and tells me what the output looks like. And we're just going to see if anything jumps out at us. 
And right away, I see key one, nothing more gibberish there, key two, gibberish, key three, gibberish. But when I XOR this with, uh, with four, we get something readable. We get profile version. And over here, we even see the word gold. And then quests, yeah, this is de we're definitely on to something here. Uh, but unfortunately, these do not turn into numbers. Like I see a little pipey bar looking thing, but that's not the number 5,500 like we were looking for. But either way, we seem to be making progress. So instead of an XOR brute, we're just gonna do a normal XOR conversion. And we're gonna say, we want to dump this to the character four. Like we wanna XOR it all with the character four. So yeah, like our input is now some readable output. Now this is probably some kind of serialized data for uh, that, the, the, that makes up the actual save file. I don't really know why they felt the need to like XOR everything with four, but uh, I don't know, maybe they saw it as their own way of protecting their save files. But as long as the save file is stored on a user's computer, there's no 100% safe way of dealing with it. So uh, yeah, I'll save this as the download.dat. And now I'm gonna open this up in a hex editor and we're gonna look at this a little closer. So I like to use the hex editor called HXD. And this lets me look at every character here. Uh, so we see a bunch of random nonsense up front. Then we see a word that we can make sense of. And then we see gold and the number two, a whole bunch of zeros, and then 7C15. But over here in the corner, if you interpret 7C15 as an integer, you end up with 5,500. And I believe that is the target we're looking for. So instead of just natively, naively changing this and calling it good, I want to try and understand a little bit more what's going on. So I am actually going to try and check out, uh, let's go back to DuckDuckGo here. Uh, Let's see, Godot binary serialization. So the Godot engine has an API and it actually has documentation here as to what all this binary serialized nonsense means. Uh, and trying to save you some reading time, uh, if you see like a, what we've got is a four byte header, a header for each piece, and that's an integer, and it specifies the data type. And everything is always gonna be padded to four bytes, no matter how small the data is. Uh, so we can look at our data and see if that actually makes sense. Also down here, we see that a two should represent an integer, and a four should represent a string. And after that, if you see a two, the next four bytes after the two are going to be the integer. And if you see a four, then the next four bytes after that are going to be an integer that says how long the string is going to be. And then after that, there's going to be the string with, uh, it's going to be length x. And I guess that x is defined by this integer. And we can look at our data to see if that matches. So here we see a four, and that is padded to four bytes. So a four says it's a string. So if, that's a, if this is going to be encoding a string, that means that this integer right here should tell us how long the string is. So E, looking over here, it says 14. So the next 14 bytes after this are going to be a string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is the string profile version as defined by that length right there, and then these extra zeros are padding it to four bytes. So we've read profile version. Then this next piece, two, we said two represents an integer. So two uh, means that this byte right here will be the, uh, the profile version. So it looks like we're at profile version 21. I mean, hex 15 is 21. And so we can go on like this. We read, okay, four, that means a string's coming up. And so then this is the length of the string. So four, so the next four characters, G-O-L-D. And then this means that there's going, like a two, that means that there's going to be an integer. And the integer for gold is this right here. So 5,500. So we can change this to something uh, a little bit bigger. Uh, how about, how about uh, 42069? Let's give ourselves 42069 gold. 
And now we should be able to save this and take it back into CyberChef and re-encrypt it with that uh, by XORing everything with four again. So let's find that downloaded file that we saved. Where is it? Download.dat. Put it back in here. Now XOR is actually two-way. So by XORing it again, we get the original data back. So 42069 is how much gold we expect to have here. So let's save this. And the save file was called HO capital T profile.dat. All right. So now let's save this over my old save file and open up Halls of Torment once again and see if we have done the magic sauce and hacked this into giving us more gold. Halls of Torment. Man, that's a cool opening. Yeah, here we go. 42069 gold. Perfect. We managed to hack it. So another thing I want to say, if you're probably you're probably curious about, you know, maybe giving yourself uh, giving yourself extra items or unlocking pieces, like really all you need to hack is the gold, and you can just manually unlock everything else. But uh, down here I found that we end up uh, having the actual unlocks. I think there's like five levels of unlocks for everything. So here I see movement speed. So let's see if we can, let's see if what we've learned with the Godot serialization can help us figure out what to change about movement speed. So four, that's a string and it's going to be 14 characters long. Okay, so that's movement speed. That's the 14 character string and then pad it out. The next piece is going to be two, which is an integer. So that integer is set to five. And I think that means I think that means we've maxed out movement speed on my file already. I don't think it goes higher than five ticks. But uh, maybe we haven't maxed out range. So here's range. And then two, that means an integer. And that one's only set to two. So here I could set this to five. And now my range would be leveled up to the highest rank, which is five. So you can go through all of this uh, with the Gal Gadot serialization options here, and, or the serialization documentation, and you can kind of figure out what all this junk means. So the, like, it's really easy to do once you know how to do it. The tricky part is just figuring out, like, what you even need to be looking at. Like, now that I've explained it, you could probably go into the save file and manipulate your own game just fine. So uh, the, the actual hacking was all of the research that had to come into this. So these videos aren't about me saying, oh, I'm so, I'm so good at this, look at how smart I am. It's more just kind of trying to show you the, the steps that we go through in order to get to the end goal that we're looking for. So if you're a Halls of Torment dev, I like your game, it's really cool looking. But why did you feel the need to hex everything with four or XOR everything with four in order to obfuscate the save file a little bit? Uh, I would recommend doing maybe some kind of some kind of bigger one because I wouldn't have been able to figure this out if you used like a multi-byte encryption scheme. Like if you did four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then that was it, and then you just like repeatedly hexed everything with that. Uh, I really would not have been able to to undo this. So uh, with that said, I'm Lord Tony, and this has been hacking the crap out of Halls of Torment. Have a nice day, and also thanks for watching. Bye-bye.